Hi there. Um, it is Let's Talk Business time and I am very excited to be here with you today to talk about business. <laughs> well, that's what we do. Today we're going to focus on what I call the proof of concept. Now very often we want to do something and people sit with a business plan and a business plan can be very, very long um, and in-depth. The, the purpose of a business plan is obviously, diff, you know, it's got various purposes, but I mean, one of it would sometimes be that somebody needs a business plan and it's a full business plan for the bank or a financial institution because they're looking for finances. Sometimes the business plan is presented to certain parties or shareholders. Um, a lot of time can be spent on a business plan and then obviously people draw up business plans because they want to start a business. <laughs> but um, very often people spend a lot of time on business plans but they don't really do the business so the idea is actually to get the balance and to start to do the business I mean you know we're planning so we can do it not just plan and plan and plan and plan and plan so if you are stuck in that you know just get rid of that and that's why I'd like to focus on what I call a proof of concept so proof of concept is almost like a mini um, business plan of something that you want to do or what you want to launch or maybe what you want to do extra. So you may have a business that's already running but you want to phase something new into your business. That's a new section to your business or you're expanding and in, before you do it you run a proof of concept. You make sure that there is a concept available for testing. So the idea is really I'm going to test it in the market and then I need to have a mini business plan surrounding that. You may even want to run, if you may be in business, you've never even done a business plan. You may even want to just put what you on, what you want to do now into a, you know, a shorter form, into a proof of concept. Um, a proof of concept is important, you know, people say to me now, but do you need me to do a business plan and then what if I find out afterwards it's not going to work. <laughs> That's a bit late, isn't it? Because it's a lot of work that goes into a business plan. Trust me, I've done lots of them for, for clients. Um, it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of effort. It takes a lot of research. So a business plan is not something you want to do unless you have first perhaps established what if it's going to work. You know, what is my proof of concept? In other words, you have got a concept. It's really what it says. I've got a concept, this is my business idea, and I need to prove that this concept is going to work. It's really actually what it means. So you can get people that run a proof of concept before they implement the software. A lot of development that gets done, so they'll say, this is my idea, I want to do this, I'd like to have this thing developed, and then there's a process that they will go through as well to develop a proof of concept. So really at the end of the day you just want to run that thing or somebody must be able to look at it and say hmm it's going to work you see what i'm saying so when i talk proof of concept and over the next couple of weeks i just want to discuss a couple of pointers and i'd like to make it very practical so you can just write down remember i said to you last week we need to write down we have to be very very engaged in business we need to make sure that whatever we do has got a purpose it's got a, an objective where we're going to so a proof of concept is an ideal uh, uh, um, situation for you and i to just make sure that whatever we're busy with we can write up these proof of concept and we can do it in different divisions i'm running a bigger company so i can have um, different ones of my departmental managers will run almost like a mini business plan, a mini project plan uh, for their division, for their department. And this is ideal. And, and then you don't have to call it a, a proof of concept, but it's very similar because in that business plan, they need to sort of prove this is what that's gonna, what's going to happen. This is what my outcome is going to be. That's what I'm moving toward. So can you see whatever I'm going to be discussing with you over the next couple of weeks, you can apply it to any of these situations. You don't have to specifically stay with it now just on a new concept that you want to launch into the market. But um, when we talk proof of concept, that is, that is traditionally what people think of. I'm going to launch something new into the market. I don't know if it's going to work. So what am I doing? I'm doing the proof first. Now, the number one thing is, I always want to, to um, encourage you 
as a business owner, you know, remember, I like keeping things simple. <laughs> I don't like complicated stuff. Or I, don't, I stay away from it because it's really just just takes your time. So keep it simple. We need to ask a couple of questions whenever we do these things. And those are very simple questions. So the first question we're going to ask ourselves is the question, what? You know those questions? Hmm? You know where I'm coming to. But I'm going to speak to you today about the what. When we talk about proof of concept, when we talk about a mini project plan, when we talk about anything that we can implement and we make it workable. Remember, this is a workable document. I would like for you to ask questions. I'd like for you to think it through. I'd like for you to brainstorm it through if you're partners in a business or if you've got people doing it with you. I don't want this to be a mundane thing that you put aside and you think, okay, this I'm going to do every night, five minutes, you know, mm, write a piece. That's not what this is about. This is really, very really practical. This is something that will make a difference to your life. Because once we start to write this down, and this is not for a bank, okay, so please don't get me wrong here. Yeah? The proof of concept, at the end, you can create a document out of this that will definitely have all your finances in it. But when you and I am going to talk about it, I'm going to do this to stimulate you so that you start to think about things that you need to write down in your proof of concept or in your project plan so that you do it. <clears throat> and then you can fine-tune it to a plan, which I'm not covering in this series because that is... Um, a, a, that's really something on its own. That's almost like a workshop on its own. But for what we're doing right here, if you write this down and if you start to do this in your business and for, for whatever, it will really help you. It will benefit you greatly. So the number one question we're going to ask ourselves in terms of proof of concept is what am I doing? What is it? What do I have to offer? So the first thing we're going to write down is a vision. Now, when I write down a vision or an objective, you can call it a vision, you can call it objective. I like both words. I think when we run a vision, when we write down a vision, people have, um, they can think this is where we're going to. Sometimes a vision is, is something very long term. And I don't want you to think too long term here. I need you to think what am I doing now? So what is the objective of what I have to offer? So very often people get confused because of the way that we've been trained. And when we write down a vision, they think, I'm going to write down where I want to be in 10 years or 20 years time. That's not what I'm talking about here. When we write down here, the objective or the vision that we're going to, it needs to be very short. It needs to be sharp. It needs to be if somebody asks you, what are you doing? Let's get back to basics. Let's get back into business here. What are you doing? What does your company offer? Then that needs to be written down, and you've got to be able to tell people in one or two sentences what you do. Because if you start explaining, you're losing people. So you're writing down this vision or this objective of this concept must be so impactful that it's going to take you quite some time perhaps to write two sentences. Because I have learned that it's sometimes far more difficult to bring across an idea or a concept in one or two sentences than want to write a whole story. But that's where the impact lies. Because when you do the concept or the business, when we know in one or two sentences exactly what we're doing, we need to know it. Our staff need to know it. Our partners need to know it. Why? Because if anybody were to ask me, what are you doing? I have to tell them in one or two sentences. Because that's going to make the first impact on that person. That's what's going to get my client interested. That is what's going to keep me on go and on the path all the time. That's what's going to keep you to your objective. And that's where I'm going to keep you at. So you need to know where you're going to. Because a good mentor will tell you, you're on your way there, stop this now. You, uh, you, you <laughs> when you're on your way to Joburg, you stop, don't look at the lights in Bloemfontein. You go, you're going to go on from Cape Town to Joburg. You're just going to go on until you get there. That's the end. So it is really, where am I going to? So if you're traveling, you'd say, this is my beginning point. Joburg is my end point. I'm not going to turn off. Maybe there's a lot of opportunities, a lot of beautiful towns and whatever on the way there. But my objective is to go to Joburg. 
from Cape Town. And it'll take me so many hours. So it's not a, it's not a tour where I stop everywhere. That's different. My objective is I'm going from here to there. That's it. And that's what we need to be able to identify under the first question here, which is what? What am I doing? What is your objective? Now, when you now write your objective, you, when you write your little project and your, your, your proof of concept, your first thing that you're going to say is, what is my objective? Where am I going to? And now, I just want to quickly speak to you if you're managing a bigger organization and you've got different um, managers in your organization or departmental or leaders or whatever you want to call them, and they need to do this for you. So, bear in mind that the leaders, they need to stay totally, they need to keep the whole vision or the whole objective of the organization in mind in order for them to do the right thing. So we still reflect one image. We, still, we all give the same thing. That's the main organization's vision. So that's why the main leader will know exactly where we're all going to. But in order for us to get there, I need you, 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 you to have your own plan and how are we going to get there, but you need to be able to tell me where you're going to in two sentences. So when we start to train our mind like this, we start to think clear. We start to stop the, the, the extra stuff. And I've got such a good reason for telling you to, stay, to, to keep this very short. Apart from the fact that it is good to communicate something short and sweet to somebody else. First, before you, I'm not saying you're not going to expand. I'm saying when you write it down, that's it. That's what you write down. When you say to somebody, what do you do? That's what I'm doing. And the more times you say it, the more people start to understand it. Because you can so easily just make that your own. Eventually, you know exactly what you're doing, and you're saying that to people, and the more times you say it, the more times it starts to become reality, the more people start to understand it, and it's one or two sentences. It's easy. But there's another reason why I'm saying that, because if you keep your vision and your objective in mind, it is so easy to say no to what does not align with it. Does that make sense? So, man, this is the wonderful thing about life. <clears throat> Great. We've got all these opportunities, isn't it? And when you're an entrepreneur, oh man, oh, we seek opportunity, don't we? But a true entrepreneur has come to the place and matured to the place of understanding of when an opportunity is my opportunity and when it's not my opportunity. Because if you take an opportunity that may be as good as it looks, it may be the best opportunity, but it was not your opportunity to take. You may miss the right one that might just come after that one. So that's why our minds need to be so clear on where we're on our way to. That is why we need to always take this mind of us and clear it of everything. Make time to go and sit back and say, it's not my vision. It's not my objective. So what do we have? Remember, I want to take it even one further now. In an organization, you've got the main vision, you've got the main objective, which should be very clear. Okay, goes down to my departments. They're very clear on what the main organization wants. But now the, the, every single one of these entities has a person or more than one person behind it. If you're one person and that person has a vision, and an objective, it's exceptionally important for that person to align to it all the time. Because you've already communicated to your teams that's where we're going. And if you want to create confusion in an organization, then the leader of an organization must change their mind all the time. You can't do that. That's why it's so important to write this down, you see? We write down where we're on our way to. Because things are going to happen. And these things are going to come, you know, good opportunities. And if the leader of an organization changes their mind all the time and go for the good opportunity and do not communicate correctly to their team, we start to lose the focus. Because it's in that unity that everybody knows where we're going to. There's a tremendous amount of strength. Now, I'm not saying that we don't investigate other opportunities. I'm not saying that you can't do that. I'm saying you need to be careful. Another opportunity is another opportunity. It is another objective. 
it is another plan, it is another proof of concept. It goes with another set of rules. It goes with another team, perhaps, I'm not sure. But when the other opportunity comes in, we first need to find out, does it actually work with the one that we have? Or what's happening here? We've got to be able, at a leadership level, to discern that and take it away from our people, because our people don't know that. They don't know the difference. And quite frankly, they don't want to know about it. We don't want to confuse our management. We don't want to confuse our leaders. Because they've been appointed. They've seen your first vision. Let them, let them see that. Keep it in front of the eyes all the time. You know, you'd never hear of a big organization that changes their vision all the time. A bank is a bank. Mostly, that's what they do. Financial institution, that's what they do. They don't say, mm, maybe I should try a little bit of selling whatever retail shoes or... They don't do that. And that's why they have become as big as they are. So when we do something, I want to encourage you, under your first, first heading, you're going to ask yourself a question. What am I doing? What is my organization doing? In two sentences. And when we're done with that, the, first, the, the second thing we're going to start to write down under that is a description. Now we're coming to, yeah, I know I can start to talk about everything. You see what I'm saying? So that two sentences is an understanding. That's the vision. That's where we're going to. And I want to come back to that again. I'm not going to go on about the rest of my number one because I think this is so vital. I feel it when I'm talking to you now. Objective is exceptionally important in life. Now, in business, we will be tempted continually to change the objectives all the time. Because what will happen is we'll know exactly that's what we've written down. And that's why I say write it down. Because you'll be on your way, you'll be on your way, and then all these things will come. That will either go against it or it will be a better opportunity. Da, da. And we need to stick with the objective because we have made a decision. And one, that's why it's so important when we set the objective. Now, I want to speak to you as an individual, as a leader, when you lead your organization to be objective-driven even when you wake up in the morning. <laughs> you see, we're talking high-level things. We're talking that <laughs> when I wake up in the morning, what is my objective? Now it may sound like, oh, what type of life is that? Why do I wake up with an objective? But you see, we need to align ourselves because when we wake up in the morning, we've got to understand there's a difference between a true entrepreneur and anybody else. A true entrepreneur will wake up and they realign themselves immediately to objective. Regardless of how I feel, regardless of my circumstances, Regardless of my bank account, regardless of everybody that complained yesterday, regardless of the 10,000 emails on my inbox, regardless of anything, today I wake up and I've got an objective. My objective needs to, I need to realign myself to that objective. What is it that I need to do today to make it happen? So to be objective driven is really, really a good idea. So sometimes we're just in that place where we realize that in order for me to reach my objective, I just need to rest. It can be as simple as that. But we have to understand that unless we keep an objective in front of our eyes, unless we keep the vision in front of our eyes, we will most assuredly let it go. Because you will feel like, no, everything will work against it. If you take that laptop first with its thousand emails, with all those things that's going to lie there, if you take those phone calls first with everybody complaining, you will lose objective and you will lose wherever you're going to and you will not be able to get there in time. So, setting objective and what your objective is, is of utmost importance for a successful entrepreneur. My time's up, so I'll be back with you next week with Excel Business. Goodbye.